Hello, my name is Grant Suter. I'm an application engineer with Keysight Technologies. I support our semiconductor analyzers, which often use a type of connector called a triax or triaxial connector. Some common questions that I get are, what is a triax conductor? How does it differ from BNC? Why is it important to use a triax? And how do I adapt triax to BNC if I need to use BNC to make my connections? Well, let's start with BNC. BNC is one of the most common connectors used with electronics test equipment, and BNC is a type of coax, where coax simply means that it has two conductors. We can refer to the two conductors as the outside shield and the center pin, which we'll call a force. In many cases, but not all, uh, the shield may be tied to earth ground. Now, the center pin, or the force, is where the measurement takes place, which could be forcing current and voltage, as well as measuring current and voltage. Now, in these pictures, I'm showing a BNC female on the left and a BNC male on the right. And just note that the gender of the connector is determined by the orientation of the center pin and not the locking mechanism of the outside shield. One more notable feature about BNC is that it has two connecting lugs. Uh, this isn't always the case. In fact, there are dozens of different types of, uh, quote, BNC connector, uh, but this is the most common variety. Now, triax, like coax, is a generic term. Uh, triax just means that the conductor has uh, three conductors. Uh, so this connector here has three conductors. And just like B and C, we have the outside shield, and we have the inner force. And then there's a third conductor called the guard. Now notice in this picture that the triax has three interlocking lugs. You can see two of them here. There's a third one on the back. And then here on the male side, you can see where there's three slots. This isn't always the case. Again, there are dozens of different varieties of triax. It's a fairly generic term. Uh, but this is the type most commonly used with HP, Agilent, and Keysight semiconductor analyzers. OK, triax has an extra conductor. So why use triax instead of BNC? Using triax connection and triax cables becomes important when you need to measure very low currents. That's why it's commonly found in semiconductor analyzers, electrometers, and high resistance meters. These are instruments that are used to measure currents in the pico, femto, and even atto amp range. B and C is not suitable for measuring low currents because of the resistance of its insulation. A typical B and C cable will have only 5 to 10 gig ohms of resistance between the center conductor and its outside shield. Therefore, if you were to apply, say, 10 volts to the center pin to make your measurement, then the shield at 0 volts at ground, you'd get 1 nanoamp of leakage current flowing in the cable. And the longer the cable, the worse that leakage would become. If you're trying to measure picoamp leakage in your uh, transistor, for example, this one nanoamp current in the cable would completely obscure the current that you're trying to measure in your device. So most instruments that use a triax connector, however, will apply the same voltage to the guard that is applied to the center pin, to the force line. Therefore, even though the triax cable may have the same insulation resistance as a BNC, it doesn't matter. With the center pin at 10 volts, and the guard also driven to 10 volts, there won't be any leakage, uh, leakage current flow between these two conductors because they're held at the same voltage. So no current flows from the center conductor to the guard. Current will flow from the guard to the shield, but we don't mind since the instrument doesn't measure the current on the guard. Our measurement takes place on the force line, which is guarded. There may be times when you need to connect an instrument with triax connections to a test fixture or cable with BNC connectors. So what is the proper way to adapt from triax to BNC? The most common way to adapt from triax to coax is to get an adapter that connects the outside shield of the triax to the outside shield of the coax. It will also connect the center pin of the triax to the center pin of the coax. The triax guard should not connect to anything on the coax side. Since the guard is actively driven to the same voltage as the force, we do not want to short it out to ground. And also, since no measurement takes place in the guard, we don't want to connect it to the force. Therefore, the guard is just left floating. It doesn't connect to anything on the coax side. In most cases, an easy way to determine if you have a proper triax to coax adapter is to just look inside the triax side of the adapter. The adapter won't have any metal where the guard would normally be. Since it isn't going to connect the triax guard to anything on the coax side, the vendor doesn't bother putting in any metal. So if your triax to coax adapter has metal for the triax guard, you need to verify that it is the proper adapter for your application. Here's an exception for when you have special needs. There are applications where you may need to adapt from triax to coax and maintain the guard. In that case, the center pin of the triax and coax will still connect together. However, in this special case, you can connect the triax guard to the outside shield of the BNC. 
This will prevent leakage within the BNC connection because the two conductors are now held at the same potential. However, you must now take special precautions that the BNC shield does not connect to earth ground and must not be exposed to any people operating the equipment. Many of these instruments can source deadly voltages and attaching a voltage to the outside shield of the BNC will pose a shock hazard. Therefore, use this type of adapter when you need to measure very low currents and when you can take the necessary precautions to stay safe. You'll find more information on semiconductor analyzers as well as tracks to BNC adapters on our website at www.keysight.com. Here are links to several documents that go into more detail and are invaluable resources for making semiconductor and materials measurements. I hope this information has been helpful. Have a great day.